So let's say you speak English and you want to learn French. So I would just give you a dictionary from French to English and English to French and ask you, okay, read the dictionary, you will learn the language and you will just be fine with the dictionary. Now, let's say, okay, someone would argue that uh, how would you know how to pronounce every word in French if you haven't heard it before? Well, I would say, okay, maybe you can read the phonetics of this word in the definitions or let's say we have um, an audible dictionary where you can listen to how each word is pronounced. Now, would that be easy for you to learn French? Would that be enough for you? Okay, some would say, okay, uh, what if I need to know about grammar? How would I understand the French grammar if I don't have uh, the grammar rules? Well, okay, I can give you a grammar reference and you can read every single grammar rule in French and good luck. Now you have all the information that you need to know about French right in front of you. You have the, the grammar reference, you have uh, a dictionary. So what's stopping you from learning French? Well, because that's not how people learn languages. People need to learn languages gradually. We need to start from simple phrases and practice these phrases. And when you get used to them, complicate these phrases even more and then keep practicing those until you, you actually get everything like gradually, like, like, like how a baby would learn. Now, unfortunately, when it comes to programming and software, most people just used to uh, teach like just give you some dictionary definition and expect you to understand everything. So you might have met some professors who have done this. So let's say uh, they are teaching you how to what is a function as a concept for the first time because it's like your first programming language. So they would just say, um, well, class, a function is a block of organized code that is used to perform a single task. They provide better modularity for your application and reusability. Depending on the programming language, a function may be called a subroutine, a procedure, a routine, or a method. Any questions? Oh, oh, my bad. Sorry. Uh, you want an example, right? Okay. Okay. So, so, so in Python, you you can just define a function like this. You can just write def, the function name, the arguments, and the body. Any questions? All right. The class is over. See you in the exam. That was helpful, wasn't it? So how do we do this in a better way? Well, if I were to explain what a function is, well, first, uh, probably you had some programming before. So probably you are already like writing the entire program in the main. You are writing all the statements under each other, all of them in the same block. And I would just continue giving you some complicated projects. And then you would realize eventually that you are repeating a lot of uh, blocks of the code. So you would continue realizing that, oh man, I am continuously, I'm always copying and pasting my code from everywhere. I'm always repeating. Every time I need to improve my, the, the logic of something, I have to improve it everywhere in my code. I just wish there was a way to avoid such repetition. I wish there was a way to write something once and use it everywhere. Now the students might think about some solutions, they might even search for solutions, but when they get to the solutions, when I introduce a function to them, they would already appreciate it, they would understand it, they would know when to use it. It's not like something ambiguous and a boring assignment that they got from the professor? No, now it's something that solves a problem for them and a problem that they have suffered from. They appreciate it and understand it. Well, let me give you another example. Usually when we uh, explain classes and object-oriented programming, we just love to over-abstract and uh, make it all about philosophy, like, okay, let me explain what classes are to you. Well, everything is an object. You are an object. A cat is an object. A dog is an object. Uh, but, but cats and dogs are animals and animals are physical objects. It's like so much abstraction that we don't know what to do with this information. It's just some boring stuff that the professor is saying. So how would we explain this any better? Well, the same way. I just have to first make you suffer. I have to 
introduce a problem and let you live through this problem and then come up come up with uh, some solutions and then I mean sometimes the students might think of some solutions by themselves they might search for solutions but anyway when we introduce the solution they would appreciate it they would fully understand it so First, I have to give them um, some projects, so they are already using some functions and uh, they have the realized that um, they are defining a lot of variables for the data. So we have, for example, um, in, a, in, a, in a game, let's say we have a player and the player has a position, the position is X, Y and Z, and then the player also has a health and has a score and has like an inventory and all of these are just so many variables and it's getting messy and getting complicated and the students might think, oh man, I just wish I could make all of that in just one variable called a player which contains all the information I need about the player. It's so messy right now. And then I would introduce the concept of classes and structures and show you how abstraction works and how encapsulation works. Now they would appreciate it because they have, they have experienced the problem, they thought about solutions, when they see a new solution, when they, when they see the official solution, they would appreciate it and understand it. And then they know how to use it and when. So in summary, I would like to say these three things. Never introduce a solution without introducing the problem first. The problem comes before the solution. There is never a solution that just came out of thin air because some genius thought about it and it has no context, it has no need, just someone invented something that has no application or no problem. No, there was always a problem that people are trying to solve. And then they come up with a solution. So. The problem always have to come before the solution. If you don't have uh, a need for a solution, you wouldn't really understand it. You wouldn't really know how, why it exists. You wouldn't really appreciate it and know where to use it and when. Number two, always let the students try to solve the problem on their own, try to come up with their own solutions before giving them the final answer. I mean, this is going to teach them some problem solving and it's going to give them some confidence that Whoever invented these solutions was not just some extraordinary genius who just happened to know the, the answers directly. No, it was someone who thought about it just like they did and found a, a good solution that worked for everyone. So later in life, they would know how to solve the new problems that they are going to face. Number three, always start by explaining the concrete ideas. Never start from the abstract ideas. Abstract ideas are usually like hard to imagine. We don't know where they came from. Like was it just some extraordinary genius who came up with these ideas? No, there was always a concrete example, something that we can see and understand and feel. And then after we see the concrete example and the, the, the concrete solutions, we just tend to abstract and generalize, but never start from the general idea. Never start from the abstraction. 